What's up guys, Paul from Paul Scholar X Fit. Today I'm gonna to go over one of the biggest questions that I get asked on a daily basis, and that is, do I use supplements? And if so, what supplements do I use? When it comes to supplements, I am simple, just like I am with my exercise. The more simple, the better. There are so many different supplements out there that it can get wildly confusing. I'm gonna simplify all of that for you and show you exactly what I use and exactly what works. So if you follow me on Instagram and you see my stories, you see exactly what I use in the morning, I'm gonna go over that first. And this is a very, very simple supplement called collagen. For me, I drink one cup of coffee in the morning and I love to put one scoop of chocolate collagen into my coffee. It's simple. If you take a look at the ingredients, so ingredient wise, it's got 45 calories. It's got two grams of carbohydrates. Pretty simple, it's made with stevia so it makes my coffee taste great. So I start the day one scoop in one cup of coffee. Now, the supplement that I typically rely the most on, and that is whey protein isolate. With my job and with the way I live my lifestyle, I consume a fair amount of whey protein. And keeping that in mind, for me, I wanna make sure that I consume a protein that is as clean as possible. So I had my manager research for me for over four months. I said, find me a company with the cleanest ingredients. I don't want any artificial colors. I don't want any artificial flavors or sweeteners or fillers. Find me something clean. And I turned down big offers from big supplement companies that use artificial sweeteners and flavors and fillers and colors in their products. And they may taste great, but if you actually look at the ingredients like I do, and I look at the ingredients in everything that I put into my body, you'll see that you're getting a whole bunch of junk. So for the amount of whey protein that I consume on a daily basis, I wanna make sure that I'm not taking in a ton of artificial chemicals and I'm taking in the best quality protein that I can. So I use all Transparent Labs products. They're clean as can be. For me, when I look at an ingredient list, I don't wanna see a gigantic square like this or a gigantic rectangle like this with a list of ingredients that I can't even pronounce. So if you take a look at my grass-fed whey protein isolate, first ingredient, there it is, grass-fed whey protein isolate. Two, natural flavors. Now this is a very controversial topic. Why do you use this stuff? It's got natural flavors. We all know that natural flavors is really confusing. We don't know what's in it. So I called them up and they told me that they source all of their natural flavors from plant sources. So I do know that they source their natural flavors not from synthetic chemicals, but from plant sources. So you'll take a look again, second ingredient, natural flavors. Then we've got Himalayan rock salt, stevia extract, and cinnamon powder. So Transparent Labs typically uses stevia in all of their products. It's what makes it taste great. It's got a light level of sweetness. It's not overbearing. So for me, being as simple as I am, I like products with stevia. Sucralose, aspartame, acesulfame, potassium, all that crap, I do not want in my supplement. So do be wary when you are choosing a supplement. You don't have to go with Transparent Labs, but when you're choosing a supplement, look at the ingredient list, see how many chemicals are in there, see how many natural ingredients are in there, and make sure you choose supplements with a very, very small ingredient list. Again, typically I like to use five ingredients or less. So as far as my whey protein consumption, I typically consume two to three shakes per day. Usually my first shake in the morning is just one and a half scoops of the whey protein isolate. So if you take a look here, one scoop has 28 grams of protein, so I'm adding another 14. So I'm getting a fair amount of protein, and that's about the only macro that I track. I typically don't track it completely, but I know that I weigh about 170 pounds, so I typically, over the course of a regular day, wanna take in about 170 grams of protein. So one to two shakes in the morning. Usually, my second shake does have special ingredients in it. So again, if you follow my Instagram stories, you know exactly what I put in my shakes, but my big power shake is one and a half scoops of the whey protein isolate with one banana, one big cup of blueberries. I typically choose frozen blueberries over fresh blueberries. They're frozen, you get all the vitamins and minerals locked in, put it right into your shake, blend it up. It does make it cool, so it tastes a little bit better. So I've got water in the rest of my shake, blend the whole thing up, there is my morning. So typically on average, two whey protein shakes a day. If I'm feeling jumpy, I may have a third. So I like to get the rest of my calories from whole foods. It is very important that you do, of course, consume whole foods. These are supplements. That doesn't mean that they should be your entire diet. All right, pre-workout. Do I take pre-workout? And I really didn't take pre-workout my entire life. I started taking it in my 30s and 40s as a parent with a lot of kids. I've got five children working all day, up all night sometimes, so I'm pretty wiped out. I only take pre-workout when I need it. Now this is bulk pre-workout. It's the best pre-workout that I've used to date, and I've used a lot. 
For me, jitters is a big thing. I hate having jitters going sky high and then crashing boom down to the bottom and I get shaky and hollow feeling. And then the next thing you know, I have low blood sugar and I crash. So with this, I typically consume one half of a scoop. I typically don't need a full scoop. As you can tell, I've got enough energy at 51 years old to get through a workout. I don't need a lot of help, but sometimes I do. So bulk is pretty solid. It's got what's called anabolic agents in it. So you got vitamin D. These are vitamins and minerals that do help promote healthy testosterone production. There's really nothing in it that would actually increase your testosterone. So again, they all aid. Vitamin D is one of the big things that if you take can increase your total or your overall testosterone levels, but really doesn't touch your bioavailable testosterone. The other pre-workout that I sometimes use is lean. I really can't tell a gigantic difference between the two. So you've got bulk and you've got lean. Both great products. Lean is typically for more endurance type workouts. Bulk for a little bit more power. Again, it is exactly what it says to try to bulk up. And I'm a hard gainer, so try to get as much advantage as I possibly can. And last but not least, creatine with HMB. I've used creatine since my early 30s. One of the most effective, if not the most effective supplement that I have ever used. Now, Transparent Labs combines creatine and HMB. I've seen a couple of studies that show that when you combine the two, you get a better overall effect. Very, very hard to tell, inconsistent studies out there, but creatine is the most researched and most studied supplement on the market all time. Very, very little side effects, a lot more positive gains from it. So creatine is an energy substrate, helps with power, short-term bursts, and it's actually over time known to help increase muscle size and actually muscle endurance at the same time. So it's typically used to reduce protein breakdown and improve muscle strength. Now, a lot of you may have heard it causes weight gain. Yeah, it can cause some weight gain. I actually eat a little bit more, which for me is important. I eat a little bit more when I take creatine. When I go off for two to three weeks, I don't eat as much and I lose weight. So it probably gives you a little bit of a water layer. If you look at a normal human being, we carry water underneath our skin, right? If you look at someone who's on performance enhancing drugs, you'll see their skin is right on their muscle. So it almost looks like if you took a, a piece of paper and you sliced them, they would open up, right? So you carry a little bit of water. That's what normal people do. It doesn't take away from your physique. Actually, it enhances it. Now, again, I know I talked about vitamin D also in the pre-workout. You can take a look here. Again, it does help to enhance potentially testosterone, total testosterone levels. Vitamin D, we've got 5,000 international units. That's 50% of your daily RDA. Just keep in mind, you can overdose on the fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. So be aware. A lot of people tend to overdo it, take as much as they possibly can with everything in life and just take too much and then end up in trouble. So be careful. Now, here's a special trick. Anyone who knows me knows exactly how I do this. I typically take my creatine with one to one and a half scoops of whey protein isolate immediately after I get done with my workout. So if you're at the gym with me and you see me go over to my cubby and you see me start to scoop, you know exactly what I'm doing. I'm taking one and a half scoops and I'm taking five grams of creatine and I'm mixing it up and I'm getting that in within 30 minutes of my workout. Here's another question I get asked a lot. Should I load or should I not load? I am of the opinion that there is absolutely no necessary reason on this planet to load creatine monohydrate. The loading phase would be five to six scoops a day. I think it's absolutely insane. Typically what you wanna do, five grams, and you can accomplish the same thing as a loading phase in about 30 days. So five grams per day is exactly what I do. No more, no less. And one thing I do not wanna see you do, I don't wanna see you take your creatine and shoot it and swallow it without water. I think it's insane. The kidneys have to process all of this. So if you take in creatine monohydrate powder, no water, your kidneys will have trouble processing it. You gotta make sure, so you wanna make sure your liver and your kidneys and all of your other organs are fine. Drink a lot of water with this. It's very simple, you don't have to over drink water. All of you who know me, I typically don't like to drink a lot of water. Sparkling water is my thing, so whenever I can find some great sparkling water, I go for it. I'll even drink sparkling water after I take my creatine. Doesn't really matter, just make sure you have some sort of water. Don't overdo it, you don't wanna get into bloating. Doesn't feel good if you slosh all that water into your stomach and it's swooshing around normal amounts of water. That's why I put a lot of water in my shakes. And again, a fair amount of water when I take my creatine. You wanna make sure you do not 
dehydrate. So in a nutshell, all of the supplements that I typically use, I do use some others, but these are the main core of supplements that you'll see me taking on a daily basis. Of course, I take multivitamins. I also take greens and reds. So there are a lot of other supplements that you can use. Again, try to simplify it. You don't need to go out and buy everything. It's kind of like buying a $20,000 bicycle or buying a $200 bicycle. It's the person or the machine on the bike that does the work and that's the most important. So buy yourself a $15,000 bicycle and you're not in shape or you're in great shape and you're on a $200 bicycle. Your choice. So typically supplements is all about improving performance. So these are the supplements that I use to improve my performance. I've perfected it over the years. I've been in this business for over 30 years. I've been a competitive athlete for over 40 years. I fine tuned exactly what my body needs. And again, remember these are supplements. They do not take the place of regular whole foods. Make sure you combine everything and it'll all work out great. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you all next week. Let's go. Cool.